As I've mentioned before, once we get into the general linear model, things start to get a lot more complex. And the first complexity that we're going to have to deal with is the idea that we cannot run simply one test to compare means, but rather we're going to run one test and then a follow-up test. That follow-up is called a post hoc test, where post hoc means afterwards. This is how we follow up on statistically significant results with our ANOVA. The ANOVA is what is called an omnibus test. It tests for overall differences among a variety of groups. So if we have three or four groups, we know that differences exist somewhere, but we don't know exactly where. At least one of those groups has to be different from the others, but we don't know which one. And so what we're going to need to do is conduct an ANOVA to find out whether there are any differences, and if so, if the ANOVA is statistically significant, then we're going to follow up with a post hoc test to determine where those differences reside. So we wouldn't do a post hoc test if our ANOVA was non-significant. We would only do the post hoc follow up if the initial ANOVA told us that there are differences in there somewhere and now we have to go and find them. The post hoc is only necessary when you reject the null hypothesis, when you say there is a statistically significant difference between groups and when there are three or more groups. If there are only two groups, well, then the solution is easy. You just look at the means. Whichever group has the higher mean, that's the one that's statistically significantly different from the other group. But in the case of ANOVA, we could have three means. Is the first one different than the second or different than the third? Or is the third just different from the first? We have to follow up in a way to determine where those differences lie. So in general terms, what a post hoc test will do is tighten up the criterion by which we would accept an effect as being significant. There are multiple ways in which we could, could, could conduct a post hoc test. The simplest one is called a Bonferroni correction. This is where you take your alpha level, typically 0 0.05, and you just divide by the number of tests. So if you were running three different samples, comparing sample one, sample two, sample three, a control in our two experimental groups, if we have three groups, we would divide a 0 0.05 by three and that would be our new alpha level for each of the groups. If we were running five tests, we would divide 0 0.05 by five. So each test would have to have a significance level of 0 0.01 in order to be considered statistically significant. Now, as I said, this is the simplest method, the most conservative method, but not necessarily the best method in that it can increase the chance for type two errors, the one where we miss an effect that is truly there. So there are other ways of approaching post hoc testing that can give us a nice balance between not inflating the type two error rate, but also making sure that we're only finding differences where they truly exist. Now, SPSS will give us 18 different types of post hoc tests. Which one do you choose? That depends upon the nature of your data. If all of the assumptions for your data have been met and the sample sizes are the same, we can use Tukey's Honestly Significant Difference or HSD. The safest option would be the Bonferroni correction, but if we have unequal sample sizes, we could use Gabriel's test, especially if we have a smaller sample size, Hochberg's GT2, the larger sample size, unequal variances, there's the Gaines Howell. So what we're getting into is that if we have met the assumptions for the ANOVA, we can feel pretty safe using Tukey's HSD. And if we haven't met those assumptions, we have options. There are other tests, post hoc tests, that we could run. So let's learn how to do the ANOVA first. And then as we get into doing research, we'll be able to find out, having not met assumptions, what type of post hoc should we run. So for our examples, we're going to use Tukey's Honestly Significant Difference as our post hoc test.